my flight boards in about an hour and a half. But uh, till then, United Club. But they're not open for another half an hour or so. Now we wait. It's a slate. I don't know if you noticed in some of my videos where they, it's like blurred and it says the episode and everything, you'll see my hands clap. That's me synchronizing the audio from my love to the GoPro. Anyway, I am officially back in the New York metropolitan area. I don't actually live in New York. I'm in New Jersey because I don't really like the city, but work is here, so I kind of have to be close. But that's, that's besides the point. I'm officially back in the area, and in the next couple days, I'll be flying to France for the French elections. But... I want to take this opportunity to talk about a journalistic and sociological concept having to do with some of the reactions I got from the past few protests I've covered. So the other day, a journalist I used to work with posted that I was entrenched in the alt-right. And I take issue with that because it makes it seem like I am somehow affiliated or siding with people who are Trump supporters or alt-right or white nationalists, whatever. And that's ridiculous. And what they said was, oh, well, I only ever seem to see you covering their stuff. And I, I quite literally have, I think, you know, a handful of videos that talk specifically about Trump supporters. And I don't actually, I don't even think I have a video that talks about the alt-right. Maybe I do. But I, I, that's besides the point. The, the issue is, no matter what you do when you're covering something, people are going to accuse you of being partisan they don't pay attention to all the news coverage. They certainly didn't watch my live stream. I have people commenting on Facebook saying that I marched with the Trump supporters the whole time, which is absolutely not true. When I showed up to the protest on May Day, I was, there was the Trump side and there was the Antifa side, and I was in the middle. I was literally in the middle. And then I went to the Antifa side, and I filmed a guy burn a flag and get arrested, conveniently omitted from these people accusing me of being a, quote, right-wing mouthpiece. This is the problem with trying to be a journalist covering politics in the United States. No matter what you do, people are going to attack you. Now this, I, I've talked about this before, and I'm not trying to sit here and complain that, oh, people you know, are, are mocking me or anything like that. The issue is we need to think about the bigger picture. Imagine how many journalists working for large news organizations won't even dare interview a Trump supporter or someone from Antifa out of fear of being accused by these people of being a shill. It got me thinking about what makes someone partisan. Why does someone go conservative? Why does someone go liberal? Wh why? And it remi I'm reminded of this quote that says, uh, you are the summation of the five people who surround you. And so what that means basically is you and your friends all influence each other and share each other's ideas, opinions, and beliefs. You might argue sometimes, but for the most part, you're informing each other and you're making each other more like you. You know, you are like the people you surround yourself with. So what makes someone like me have no strong feelings one way or the other? You know, what makes me do journalism well? Well, the truth is I don't have a core social group. I don't have a group of friends that I hang out with all the time. I don't have a bubble on Facebook with 300 friends. My Facebook friend account is maxed out. And that means people are posting a ton of random stuff. Sometimes I see conspiracy theories about flat earth taken unironically. I see people talking about 9-11. I see people talking about Pizzagate. I see people talking about Trump, about Hillary, about Bernie. And I can't interact with most of it. So I don't see the same things that many of these people in these bubbles do. So then it leads me to the next question of how do you break that bubble? And the truth is I have no idea. But what I can say is when I'm dealing with things like this, of being accused of marching with Trump supporters when I literally have a video of, of me standing next to Antifa, there's no point in even trying to be balanced. There are people who are saying, I never once talked to Antifa, and that's just not true. I, I went back and forth between the protests. 
So why would any other journalist bother doing it? Because even if they do, it gets ignored. So let me say this, two things. One, why do I cover what I cover? Why was I at the Trump counter protest to May Day? Well, I cover conflict, crisis, and what I consider to be worldly impactful events. It's kind of vague, it's hard to quantify, but I could march around with the people on May Day and just follow them through the streets, but that's not a story you really need a field reporter for or commentary on. Yeah, we know it happened. They estimated 100,000 or so people were gonna come out and march for immigration rights and for climate change. It's May Day, it's a labor protest, so, so we get it. But I'm looking for the active conflict. And so when I hear that Trump supporters are gonna be holding a rally, on May Day, I know that we're going to see counter protests, we're gonna see real conflict. A lot of people say, hey, Tim, you cover protests. No, I don't. Take, for instance, the Women's March. I didn't cover the Women's March at all, really. I mean, I think I posted one tweet. My goal is to go places where we're seeing this conflict happen and tell you why I think it's happening, tell you what's happening, talk to some of the people involved, and try and figure out what's making the world turn the way it is. And so often, I'm doing international stories, like I'm going to France soon. But you gotta imagine that it is problematic for journalism as a whole, if this is the reaction people have. And so the second point is what I am hoping to give you when I do interviews and when I do these stories. Someone commented on my Gavin McInnes video saying I should have countered, I should have argued with him. You may notice that when I do interviews, I don't really argue with people. I might raise a counterpoint, I'll cut straight to the core, but my goal is to make sure that you get a fair representation of what this person thinks. I'm not here to ambush somebody. I'm not here to, to drag somebody down and go, gotcha. I did an interview with Baked Alaska, and I said, you did these tweets, they were controversial. Explain why you did them. And then when he brings it up, I ask him, did you regret it? Were they mistakes? I do the same thing with Gavin McInnes. I say, what are the Proud Boys? The goal is you get to hear straight from the horse's mouth what these people think. No spin. You get to hear literally from them. Now, these people could be wrong. They could be crazy. That's not the point. That's for you to decide if they're wrong or crazy. It's my job to make sure I ask them the questions to get them to talk about these issues. That's really it. I'm not going to go and jump in front of someone's face and start screaming about some controversial subject that I know they can't answer and then they run away. I want to sit down. I want to make sure it's, it's scheduled and then they're going to say it. I will say this too. You know, if someone gives me BS, sure, I'll counter absolutely. But the, the goal of most of what I'm doing is to have someone explain themselves and their issues and then you can see from them. The reason I do this is that when you look to a partisan news source, they're going to attack the person and they're going to try and drive the conversation in a way that makes it look like these people are wrong, stupid, or crazy, and that's not fair. You know, I'm not here to go to Baked Alaska and say, I got you. You did this thing. I'm here to go to him and say, you have to explain this because people are wondering why you did it. That's really it. So tomorrow, I'm really hoping to have a really cool interview that I can't say right now in New York City. Maybe I'll be able to get it. Not 100% sure. But uh, Thursday, I should be leaving for France. So make sure you stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. Click the like button if you like these videos. Comment below. Let me know what you think. And as always, subscribe for more videos every single day at 6 p.m. I'll see you tomorrow.